Over the last few weeks, Ubisoft has been dropping new info about Assassin's Creed Mirage in the form of low-key interviews, articles, and most recently, a developer video about the game. So I'm going to break down all the need-to-know info and highlights for you here. So by the end of the video, you'll be up to date on everything AC Mirage. Now let's go through the key points in the recent dev video just released by Ubisoft. And let's start with the robes, because we just picked up solid confirmation that after Basim does become a hidden one, he will progress through different outfits in the game, according According to his assassin rank, starting with the thief outfit through to the apprentice blue robes, and finally the famous red mentors robes that you will earn towards the end of the game. And speaking of robes, we also got our first look at the new color dyes and how to change them in the outfit dye panel in the infantry menu, as you can see here. And incidentally, this is also the first time we've officially seen the infantry menu as well, where we have six equipable options. The first being the outfit or robes we choose, which I'm presuming has stats in embedded within them, but no confirmation on that yet, as well as the outfit die slot below it and the sword panel completing the left-hand side of this menu. But over to the right, we have the costume section, which I imagine is our transmog option, where we can select a particular assassin robe we visually prefer in game to get that cosmetic look in Baghdad without sacrificing stats. And just below that, this talisman slot I foresee being a stat bonus effect where we can equip an item like the Hourglass of Time, which we saw in that recent pre-order bonus trailer, and it will give us some sort of kind of buff in game. And finally, the dagger panel, which is Basim's offhand and used primarily for parrying in combat. Now to the right-hand side, we have these three icons here, which are confirmed to be tokens that we can earn in game and represent different factions that we can then hire for missions, just like in the old Ezio games. With these materials over to the left-hand side of this menu, used to upgrade tools back in the bureau to enhance their uses. Now at the top, we have the tools menu for tinkering with our tools, the infantry for all the items we'll collect in game, the world being the map menu and the investigation panel being a new mechanic that helps us identify targets and uncover the Order of the Ancients in Baghdad. Now finally, we have skills, which I will walk you through in just a second, and the codex panel here, which contains all the background info and discoveries that we make in game. Now the dev team did confirm in this recent dev video that Mirage is not an XP-based progression game, meaning you just need to follow the story as well as completing narrative side missions, which will result in you gaining a new rank that will subsequently allow you to spend a skill point in your skill tree menu, which we also get our first look at here. And we have three trees in this game. The first being the Phantom Tree, which has six skills to spend our points in, with three of them being shown here. I'm gonna walk you through them now. The first being Breakfall, where Basim automatically performs a role when landing from a dangerous height, which was a skill in Valhalla, by the way, as well as airstrike, which slows down time in game while aiming with a throwing knife to make sure you get that kill. And thirdly, the kickback ability where after a successful parrying game, we can kick an enemy in a direction we want also a move based on Valhalla. I don't think it's exactly the same, but a kick skill was in Valhalla. Now, with all that in mind, it seems like the Phantom Tree is based on stealth and movement upgrades in combat with the Trickster Tree looking like a utility tree for upgrades such as more cash when pickpocketing or increasing health pots and their effectiveness. And perhaps here, enhancing the speed of our reload time when using throwing knives or increasing their capacity just from all of the skills I can presumably identify here. Now, moving on to the predator tree, this looks more like a selection of skills where we can utilize our eagle vision and actual eagle in game. So perhaps a tree to spend points in to improve your planning and visual locations of enemies in game becoming more apparent before you conduct a stealth mission. We also saw 20 skill points here in the preview with only 16 available skills to spend those points on on screen with Stefan Boudon mentioning in an interview several months ago that you won't be able to unlock all the skills in game. So unless that's changed or this is just a developer kit that's capturing footage, we seem to be able to unlock all skills and have some points left over here, but I imagine we will get confirmation on that officially soon. Now, as for combat, we got our first look at hand-to-hand -hand sword combat with the UI shown where all the animations have been revamped according to Alexander Rosette, one of Ubisoft's game designers, where the focus was to create an authentic agile assassin much like Altair. He went on to say that the only weapons we'll have access to in game is the sword and dagger, which means that there will be a lot of different cosmetic options available in game to ensure that you have the sword that you want to equip visually 
in Baghdad. Now, in my opinion, one of the best things about the Assassin's Creed series is learning about the historical time period that the games take place in, with a discovery tour often following the release of a main title several months after. But this time, Ubisoft is doing it a little bit differently with Assassin's Creed Mirage because they are integrating a discovery tour mechanic from launch, which means that part of the in-game codex, which you can see here, will provide us with a database of lore and general history of Baghdad in the 9th century that has actually been curated by several reputable historians around the world, including the imagery here, which are real photographs taken directly from Ubisoft's partner museums. But what is interesting about this mechanic is that it is also tied directly to the main game progression system with over 66 historical sites for you to engage with around the map that can be broken down into five historical topics, those being the economy, belief, daily life, government, art and science, and court life in the Caliphate. Now, I think this icon in the recent gameplay reveal, which is similar to AC Valhalla's location marker on the compass, is our historical site location. So one to look out for if you really like your history. And of course, like the previous Assassin's Creed Discovery Tours, when you do complete all 66 historical sites, you will pick up a authentic time period reward that hasn't yet been specified. Now, if you are enjoying the video so far, please do leave a very swift like down below. It helps support me on YouTube, so thank you very much. And good news, I'm running a AC Mirage game giveaway. You just need to be a subscriber of the channel to enter, and the link is in the pinned comment, so very best of luck to you. Now, the narrative director, Sarah Bellew, gave an interview to WCC Tech a few weeks ago that has been largely flying under the radar because there's some key bits of info in her answers regarding Mirage, which I think you'd like to know. And let's run through those highlights for you now, starting with modern day gameplay or scenes in Mirage. Well, quite simply, there won't be any, which I'm sure some of you will be happy about and others not so much. We will also be able to witness Basim cutting off his ring finger in game in that very famous assassin ceremony and not just watch it as a kind of cinematic trailer with Sarah not confirming if he also cuts off his other ring finger on his other hand to wield two hidden blades essentially when asked about it, which would be a cool feature, but I don't really see that happening to be honest with you, but I would absolutely love to be wrong there. I think that could be a very cool mechanic. She also confirmed that if you cross world boundaries or kill too many civilians in the game, you will desynchronize with the animus just like the old games as well as all the main missions, assassinations, stealth contracts and side content all contributing to the main narrative in one way or another. So that means we won't just get a random fetch quest which then does nothing for the story which is good in my opinion. Additionally, Basim will receive a new rank every time he kills an important target in the story until he ranks up to the max level of Master Assassin with the five tools we saw in the recent gameplay trailer being unlocked in any order that you want depending upon your own preference. So the choice is yours there, which is also a good mechanic to implement in this game in my opinion. But while we're on the topic of positive additions in this game, Sarah did confirm that we will be able to collect very specific items in Baghdad, which will then be used to unlock a special AC Mirage outfit. So I reckon we've got a Middle Eastern Isu armor set on our hands here, as well as Sarah saying that the Altair outfit will be available for Basim to wear in game, which we've seen Ubisoft release as a free cosmetic across the last several games. So no surprise here, given that Mirage takes a lot of influence from AC1. But something which isn't ideal is the fact that we won't be able to toggle on or off Bassam's hood since it was too problematic allegedly to do in cinematic cutscenes and I'm a bit gutted about that to be honest with you as it is something that the community asked for in Valhalla for over two years but I do think having your hood on all the time is better than not having it on at all in Valhalla so I guess there is silver linings there. Now I've got more AC Mirage content for you which I think you'll like so give the video on your screen a click right now to get the full breakdown on changes that are happening in this game and I'll see you there in just just a second but if you're still here big thanks to Nika for helping me make this video and the Reloads Club for your support every month I really appreciate it coffee is on them and hopefully I'll see you in that next video